Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. My name is Muhammad Hakimi Fidaus bin Muhammad and today I am the first presenter of my group which is group 20 for the EKC 291 Chemical Engineering Laboratory 1 webinar video. Without any further ado, let's proceed with the first part of this video which is an introduction section. As you can see from the title, our group we explain about experiment 21 which is mixer settler experiment. What is mixer settler? But first, let me explain by separate this one term into two term, mixer and settler. Mixer. It is a mixing chamber where a mechanical agitator brings in intimate contact the fit solution and the solvent to carry out the transfer of solutes. The mechanical agitator is equipped with a motor which drive a mixing and pumping turbine. This turbine draw the two phases from the settlers of the adjacent stages, mix them and transfer the emulsions to the associated settler. Command laboratory mixer consists of single mixing stages whereas industrial skill copper mixers may consist of up to 3 mixer stages where each stage perform a combined pumping and mixing action. So this is the picture of the mixer. Now let's proceed with the settler. It is a settling chamber where the two phases separate by the static disintegration. Coalition split facilitate the separation of the emulsion into two phases which is heavy and light. The two phases then pass to continuous stages by the overflowing the light phase and the heavy phase wheels. The settler is calm pool downstream of the mixer where the liquid are allowed to separate by gravity. The liquids are then removed separately from the end of the mixer. Now, let's talk about mixer settler. Mixer settler are a class of mineral process equipment used in the solvent extraction process. A mixer settler consists of the first stage that mix the phase together followed by a quenching settling stage that allow the phase to separate by the gravity. There are many industrial applications of mixer settlers. However, it is commonly used in the copper, nickel, uranium, lanthanide and cobalt hydrometallurgy industry when the solvent extraction process are applied. First of all, let's talk about the objective. The objective of this experiment are to determine the extraction efficiency of a single stage mixer settler as a liquid liquid extraction unit. The second, to investigate the effect of the total flow rates on the extraction efficiency. The third one, to investigate the effect of the solvent to fit ratio of the extraction efficiency. And the last one, to investigate the effect of the stirrer speed on the extraction efficiency. In this experiment, the equipment used is a single stage mixer settler. It is conceived of two feet vessel, two metering pump with a pulse tension damper, two receiving vessel, and of course a single stage mixer settler unit. It is used to carry out a liquid liquid extraction process to investigate the factors that affecting the extraction efficiency. Separation by liquid-liquid extraction can be defined as the selective removal of one or more components either from the homogeneous liquid mixture or from a solution using a second liquid or solvent which is partially or wholly immiscible with the first. In this extraction process, the feed used is acetone plus water and it is mixed with the solvent which is toluene in an agitated vessel, after which the layer are settled and separated. Agitation of the two phases in the mixing chamber will cause the transfer of solute component from one phase refinite 
into other extract. The mixer will then flow into the settling chamber where they are settled and separate again into two different phases before being collected in the receiving vessel. The extract, which is toluene rich, is lighter than the raffinate, which is water rich. The extraction efficiency was determined by the refractive index reading of the sample. The sample was collected from the raffinate and extract every 5 minutes and the value of refractive index was taken by using a refractometer. This is refractometer. There are some factors that can affect the extraction efficiency such as flow rates, solvent to the fit ratio and the stirrer speed. Thus, this study recommends that higher flow rates, higher stirrer speed and higher solvent to fit ratio will all result in higher extraction efficiency. So let's proceed with the theory part of this experiment that will be presented by Shaila. Thank you. My name is Shaila and I'll be presenting the theory. For the theory, I'll be talking about the introduction to liquid liquid extraction, streams and components in the system, extraction process, and the graphical representation. As we all know, the mixer settler uses the concept of liquid liquid extraction. So what is liquid liquid extraction? It is a separation process consisting of the transfer of a solute from one solvent to another, the two solvents being immiscible or partially miscible with each other. The simplest liquid liquid extraction involves three components, which are solute, solvent, and the carrier. So when do we actually use liquid liquid extraction? Liquid liquid extraction is applied when the required solute from the feed have almost similar boiling point with the carrier. Besides that, mixtures that cannot withstand high temperature of distillation also uses LLE. Unlike distillation, which is based on boiling point differences, extraction separates solutes based on their different solubilities in different liquids. Separation is achieved when the substances constituting the original solution is transferred from the original solution to the other liquid solution. Next, I'll be talking about the streams in a liquid liquid extraction system. The following terms are widely used to describe the different streams in a liquid liquid extraction system. There are basically four different streams which are the feed, solvent, raffinate, and extract. The composition of each stream can be defined by several ways, which are mole concentration, molar concentration, mole fraction, mole ratio, mass fraction, and mass ratio. It's important that we know the meaning of each stream. For example, the feed contains the desired solute and the raffinate contains little solute due to the solute being extracted and the extract contains the extracted solute. For a better understanding, raffinate is a residual feed solution and the extract is the solvent rich solution. In simpler terms, the feed becomes the raffinate once the solute has been extracted from the feed, so it's called the raffinate. And for the extract, it's basically formed when the solute has been transferred to the solvent and it becomes the exit stream from the process. Next, I'll be talking about the extraction process. The feed is mixed with a solvent in an agitated vessel. One phase is dispersed under agitation. When the traction of the desired solid takes place, the dispersed phase is allowed to settle. After that, the layers are settled and separated. And then it's finally taken out as an extract. The extract may be lighter or heavier than the raffinate. And so, it may be shown coming from the top of the equipment in some cases and from the bottom in others. For a more clear picture, 
You can see how the light face moves upward from the bottom while the heavy face moves downwards from the top in a counter current fashion. Finally, the solvent after becoming enriched in solute leaves the system as an extract. Lastly, I'll be talking about the graphical representation of the liquid mixtures. There are two graphical systems in the liquid liquid extraction which are the rectangular coordinates and the triangular coordinates. These are the example of the triangular and rectangular coordinates. The rectangular coordinates are easier to plot but the triangular coordinates offer a more representative view of the component compositions. The curve which is essentially a combination of dilute rich and solvent rich curves separates the upper region of stable single phase mixture from the lower region of unstable mixture which tends to separate into two phases. The composition of extract and refinite are connected by the tie lines having different slopes. The tie lines get shorter as they get away from the x-axis and eventually they converge at a point P. As you can see in this figure. There are four procedures in this experiment that consist of 1. General Operating Procedures 2. General Startup Procedures 3. General Shutdown Procedures and 4. Experiment Procedures This picture presents Mixer Satellite Experiment in Unit Operation Lab. First, let us discuss on General Operating Procedure. It is important that the user read and fully understand all the instructions and precautions stated in the technical documentation supplied with the mixer satellite prior to operation. The following procedures will serve as a quick reference for operating the unit. This is the process flow diagram for single stage mixer satellite. First, metering pump settings P1 and P2. The feed flow rate can be adjusted by changing the stroke and frequency settings on the pump. Adjust the stroke length by turning the knob on the pump and set the frequency on the pump's control panel. By referring to the pump's flow rate settings diagram in appendix, we can determine the required stroke and frequency value in order to achieve a specific value for flow rate. It is advisable to change the pump settings with the pump switch on and running. Pump station damper B5 and B6. The vent cap should always be tightly closed and the damper vessels should be half full during operation for optimal performance. The back pressure relief valves B5 and B6 can be adjusted by using a small screwdriver to change the back pressure and consequently the liquid level in the damper vessels. If the damper vessels are overfilled with liquid, drain the liquid by opening the fan and bottle caps. Third, Stirrer Motor Speed Control M1 Turn the knob on the stirrer motor to control the rotational speed of the stirrer blades. Turn the overflow valve V13 on top of the settler to adjust the interface level between the light and heavy faces. Moving the valve up will raise up the interface level, while moving it down will lower the interface level. Do not adjust the overflow valve lower than the middle of the settling chamber to prevent breaking the glass beneath. Let us move on to general startup procedures. First, ensure that all valves are closed. Second, switch on the power supply for the unit. 
Third, prepare the desired chemicals and fill feed vessel B1 with the feed solution, which is solute plus diluent, and feed vessel B2 with pure solvent. Next, open valves B1 and B2. Switch on metering pumps P1 and P2 and adjust the stroke and frequency settings to mid-range. Allow both the feed solution and solvent to enter the mixing chamber. Switch on the steering motor M1 and set the speed to about 200 RPM. Don't forget to observe the flow of the mixed liquid into the setting chamber to form two layers. Watch the interface level and position it at the middle of the setting chamber by adjusting valve P13. Later, allow both liquids to overflow into their respective collection vessels B3 and B4. Vessel B3 will contain the heavy face while vessel B4 will contain the light face. And lastly, the unit is now ready for experiment. There are also general shutdown procedures when operating this mixer satellite. In order to shut down, this mixer settler first we must switch off both metering pumps P1 and P2 next switch off the stirrer motor M1 third switch off the power supply for the unit close valve V1 and V2 Open valves V7 and V8 to drain all liquid from the mixer satellite. Open valves V11 and V12 to drain all liquid from the receiving vessels B3 and B4. Last but not least, if required, open valves V3 and V4 to drain all liquids from the feed vessels B1 and B2. Now, we come to the last section of the procedures, which is experiment procedures. First, we need to know the solvent, the feed, the extract and refinate for this experiment. The solvent that we use in this experiment is toluene, which is the light phase that we get at the end of the experiment. Meanwhile, the P are the acetone, which is solute, plus water as a diluent, and they act as the heavy phase at the end of the experiment. The extract is a toluene rich or light phase and the refinate is a water-rich or heavy phase. Before we start our experiment, we need to prepare the following chemicals. A. The feed or heavy phase. We need 20 liters of acetone water solution at the desired composition between 30 to 50 percentage of weight. B. The solvent or light phase, which is 20 liter of pure toluene. After that, we need to perform the start up procedures as described before. We must make sure that both pumps P1 and P2 settings set at the desired flow rates. The flow rates need to be used are given in Appendix E. Please refer to the pump flow rate setting diagram as given in Appendix A to set the flow rates. The 
the speed of stereo M1 is set to between 200 to 600 RPM and let the experiment run for about 5 to 10 minutes. When it done, collect the samples as follows. A. Sample at valve V9 and label as R, refinite. B. Sample at valve V10 and label as E, extract. In order to complete this experiment, we must measure the refractive index for both samples and use the calibration curve to determine the acetone or solid composition in each sample. Please use the calibration curve in Appendix C and D for the determination of acetone composition in the samples. Repeat the sample collection and analysis steps 6 to 7 for every 5 to 10 minutes. When the composition values are constant over time, steady state has been reached. Record the steady state composition values for the particular operating condition in the table as given in Appendix E. Lastly, all equilibrium and calibration data for the acetone toluene water system are given as Appendix F and G. Okay, right. Thank you, Shaila and Christina. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Yongxin and I'm going to share the result and the discussion in this mesocellular experiment. So, basically, I divide the content into three parts. One is the data we collected in general as whole. The, the whole data is a mess I'm not going to share you here. One is the discussion. What trend can be concluded in this experiment based on our objective? And lastly, is the error that occurred in this experiment. Without further ado, let's start with the data collected in general. In this mixer sector, we are going to do 9 runs of the experiment, which include the 3 runs with different total flow rate, 3 runs with different solvent to feed ratio, <coughs> and 3 runs with different sterile speed. However, among these runs, they have a similarity where like a standard to be compared. This standard is in run number 2 in the total flow rate. With the feed flow rate of 6 liter per hour, solvent flow rate of 6 liter per hour, solvent to feed ratio is 1, and a stirrer speed of 200 rpm. While conducting this experiment, the result of run number 2 is used repeatedly in the following run. The variable in this run is the 4 liter per hour and 8 liter per hour of the feed and solvent flow rate, 0 0.5 until 2 solvent to feed ratio, and 400 and 600 rpm stirrer speed. So our group set the zero time as the five min as five minute after letting the extract and refinite flow first. This action is to make sure that the flow is in steady state. Then the data is recorded every 5 minutes until 20 minutes. In general, the total flow rate, solvent to feed ratio, and the extraction efficiency, uh, stirrer speed increase, the extraction efficiency will increase as well. For your information, the data collected is in terms of refractive index. From there, as Kisina shared just now, calibrate the respective composition of acetone in the mixture. The refractive index of toluene is 1.494, acetone is 1.356, and 
and water is 1.332 at 25 degrees Celsius. So what we expect here is, as the time move on, the refractive index of the extract will decrease as the composition of acetone increase because the toluene extract the acetone from water. Same case in refinate, the is, uh, refractive index will decrease as the water mixture has less acetone composition. In second part, result and discussion. Uh, extraction efficiency versus the total flow rate graph is plotted. In general, the efficiency is proportional to the total flow rate. Maximum extraction efficiency is up to 157.8%. Why the total flow rate is proportional to the efficiency is because as the more fluid flowing through, there is more surface contact between the feed and solvent. So, more mass transfer occur. Notice there are some error in this graph. The efficiency experience decreased when the total flow rate increased from 8 liter per hour to 12 liter per hour. It should be continuous increasing. Another graph plotted is the extraction efficiency versus the stirrer speed. The trend is proportional to the greater the speed will have a greater power input to disperse the inlet stream into continuous phase. However, same, same error occur in this graph also. The efficiency more than 100 is not applicable. Lastly, the graph plotted is separation efficiency versus the solvent to feed ratio. We focus on the trend only instead of the figure since 600 of efficiency is not applicable. Notice that the peak of the curve is somewhere around 1 to 1.5 ratio. This indicates that not necessarily the larger the ratio will give a greater efficiency. In this case, the optimal range is 1 to 1.5 solvent to fit ratio. In this single stage mixer sectoral experiment, there are some errors occur such as unstable of temperature, improper mixing, unable to reach the steady state, accumulation of sample in the tube, and the inconsistent flow rate that affected the analytical result. First is the unstable of the temperature. This is due to the surrounding temperature and the heat generated by the stirrer motor. The stirrer motor has been operated more than 7 hours in our experiment. The heat generated in the motor will affect the mixing because the motor is directly in contact with the feed and solvent. The refractive index of the sample is very sensitive towards the temperature, especially the extract. The temperature will affect the density of the component in the sample and thus indirectly affected the refractive index. Besides, improper mixing did happen too. During the experiment, two invisible layers could not form during the mixing due to the lack of knowledge to operate the mixer sector operation. The heavy phase which is the feed flow too slow compared to the light phase causing only the pure toluene in the mixer meaning the blue color of the inlet dominate the mixer settler and flow through the heavy phase outlet which is the yellow color. Effort to overcome this problem is to request technician to help in adjusting the valve and flow rate of this feed. Thus, the reading of run 1 and 2 are not that accurate. The valve on the mixer has to be adjusted from time to time in order to allow equal flow rate of extract. In addition, unable to reach the steady state within 20 minutes time. When the heavy phase flow rate is adjusted to be have a stable flow, the light phase unable to be drawn out 
from the missile settler because the heavy phase is constantly being drawn out and the light phase cannot be collected above. So the data we collected is unstable and fluctuate. Next, the accumulation of the sample inside the pipe due to the shape of the tube. Reading might taken reading taken might be same as the reading of previous run due to the accumulation. For example, the extract flow after 5 minutes still stuck at the pipe and will mix with the 10 or 15 minute extract. This causing the reading of refractive index same. This might be the error in our graph just now. Lastly, Inconsistent flow rate might occur in this experiment. This is because the flow rate is obtained by interpolating from the pump flow rate setting diagram in order to obtain the stroke rate from the desired flow. It might be errors in obtaining the exact stroke rate from desired flow rate cause the deviation of the flow rate of feed and solvent. Thus, the flow rate calculated are not same as the flow rate that pump perform. So that's all for my part. Thank you. Now we already in the last part of our video which is conclusion section. Based on this experiment, we can conclude that the extraction efficiency of a single stage mixer settler is affected by a total flow rate, the stirrer speed and the solvent of the feed ratio. As the total flow rate increase, there is more fluid flowing and the more surface contacted between feed and the solvent within a range of time. Thus, it will boost the extraction efficiency. However, the efficiency of the extraction will be reduced if the flow rate is too large since it may cause flooding on the unit operation. The higher the stirrer speed, the better the separation will be. For the solvent of fit ratio, we can observe that the maximum separation efficiency falls between the ratio of 1 to 1.5 as the approximately 1.5 solvent to the fit ratio was required to achieve 99% of BDO extraction. So that's all from me and my group. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.